Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Doms Industries Limited Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. Before we begin, a brief disclaimer. The presentation and results release which Doms Industries Limited has uploaded on the stock exchange and their website, including the discussions during this call, may contain certain forward-looking statements concerning company's business prospects and financial performance and profitability, which are subject to several risks and uncertainties, and the actual results could materially differ from those in such forward-looking statements. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now have the conference over to Mr. Anirudh Joshi from ICSA Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Lizan. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q3 FY24 and nine months FY24 results conference call of Doms Industries Limited. We have with us senior management represented by Mr. Santosh Rasiklal Raveshya, Managing Director, and Mr. Rahul Shah, Chief Financial Officer. Now I hand over the call to the management for their initial comments on the nine months and quarterly performance and then we will open the floor for question and answer session thanks and over to you sir thank you anirudh ji uh, hope uh, i'm audible yes sir uh, please please go ahead thank you uh, good evening everyone uh, it is a pleasure to welcome all the participants to our first uh, earnings uh, conference call for the quarter three and nine months period for the financial year 24. Joining me on this call is uh, Rahul Shah, our uh, CFO, and uh, Marathon Capital, our investor relation advisor. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through our investor deck and results release that we have uploaded on the exchange and our company's website. To begin with, I take this opportunity to thank uh, 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 all of you uh, and the entire capital market fraternity with a special mention to our shareholders for the overwhelming faith shown in our initial public offering. The listing marked a significant milestone in our journey, motivating us in achieving excellence ahead. Considering this is our first call post-listing, for the benefits of participants whom we are interacting for the first time, let me spend some time to provide an overview of the company. DOMS is one of the India's leading stationery and art product company. Our journey started in 1973 with the formation of RR Industries by our founders, my father, late Sri Rasik Bhai Raveshya, and my uncle, late Sri Mansuklal Rajani, who over the years undertook the business of manufacturing and sale of pencils and crayons. Subsequently, in 2005, we launched the DOMS brand by incorporating this company, which was known as Right Fine Products Private Limited. In 2011, with an objective to streamline our operations and achieve integration, we merged all stationary business of group into this company. Further, in 2012, we entered into strategic partnership with FILA, a listed Italian multinational company, engaged in supply of various art materials and stationary products with a global presence. As a company, we have focused on growing substantially and remain steadfast in our mission to consistently increase our market share in the interesting Indian market. Today, the company manufactures and sells well-designed quality stationery and art products, categorized primarily into seven categories that includes scholastic stationery, scholastic art material, paper stationery, kits and combos, office supplies, hobby and craft, and fine art products. The company's products are primarily sold under the flagship brand DOMS, as well as through our other brands like C3, Amaris, and Fixifix. Our manufacturing facilities are located in Umargaon, Gujarat, and uh, Barigramna, Jammu. Our operations are spread over approximately 36 acres of land with over, of, with over 1.25 million square feet. 
we are focused on achieving a greater degree of backward integration which we believe enables us to improve efficiencies ensure quality control reduce dependency on third parties and enhance profitability at doms we continue to focus on expanding our manufacturing capabilities so that we can quickly and effectively cater to the increased market demand of our products our ongoing expansion at our existing facility coupled with our proposed 44 acre expansion will provide us required resources to continue our growth momentum and enhance our market share the success of our company would not have been possible without our multi distribution channel network which is spread domestically across 28 states and union territories of india as well as in our 44 countries globally the company's keen focus on research and development product engineering backward integrated led manufacturing operations driving a large and diverse product offering has enabled doms to become the fastest growing stationery and art material product company in india in terms of revenue over the past few years we believe that india continues to have a strong demand for stationery and art material segment and doms is well positioned to capitalize on this growth opportunity reinforcing a long term vision of pursuing robust and profitable sales growth we are sincerely thankful to our consumers our channel partners and our passionate team which has helped us in delivering consistent growth with this uh, i would like to hand over the call to our chief financial officer uh, mr rahul shah for the update on q3 and 9 month financial uh, year 2024 financials thank you very much thank you santosh bhai uh, good evening everyone uh, coming to the details of our financial performance highlights for the quarter ended uh, december uh, december 31st uh, 2023 and 9 month period ending the same uh, i would like to state our revenue from operations for q3 fy24 grew by 22.3% year on year to about 3 uh, 3716 uh, million and by 29.5% year on year 9 month ended 9 uh, month ended 31st december to 11334 million this growth was backed by increase in capacities across our core product categories as well as introduction of new product segments like rising instruments as well as increase in the average selling prices of our products the ebitda for q324 grew by 42.7% year on year to 694 million and uh, ebitda margin expanded by 270 basis point year on year to an impressive 18.7% ebitda for 9 month ended uh, december 31st 23 grew by an impressive 57.8% year on year to 1968 million and ebitda margin stood at 17.4% this strong growth in ebitda margin was primarily on account of lower raw material prices as well as owing to the change in product mix and the benefit that the company received with the consolidation of microwood our subsidiary company profit after tax for q3 fy24 grew by an impressive 43.4% year on year to 388 million rupees and pat margin stood at 10.4% as compared to 8.9% in q3 fy23 pat for 9 month fy24 grew by 69.1% year on year to uh 1127 million indian rupees and pat margin for this period increased to 9.9% as compared to 7.6% in 9 month fy23 the consistent growth in our performance reflects the power of our brand acceptance and is testimony of our effective implementation of our business strategy on the operational front front we continue to focus on expanding our manufacturing capabilities to capitalize on the growth potential and gain market share towards this aim we have spent approximately 280 million indian rupees in capex in the quarter uh, in the third quarter of fy24 and have recently added about 1000 100000 square feet of manufacturing floor space uh, in commercial production during this quarter this manufacture the manufacturing operations at this new plant was commercialized in a record period of 90 days from the completion of construction another 100000 square feet of plant is under construction 
which is likely to be operational during first quarter of FY25. This, coupled with our proposed 44 exp uh, acres expansion, will provide us with the required resources to continue our growth momentum and enhance our market share. Uh, with this, uh, I would uh, request Anirudh uh, to uh, open the floor for question and answers. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kunal Vora from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Congress Santosh Bhai and Rahul Bhai for the listing and strong results. A uh, few questions from my side. First is uh, on the margins. EBITDA margins fairly strong at 17.4%, uh, like more than 300 bips improvement. And uh, if I go and look at the 4 2 last year, like again, margins were strong. It implies that you might end the year with more than 17.5% margins. So wanted to understand how sustainable is this and uh, are there any adjustments which we need to be aware of? So, uh, Kural Bhai, uh, like mentioned during the call, you know, the increase in margins are attributable to three key factors. One is uh, a slight reduction in raw material prices, which was about 1.5 percentage. Uh, there was a positive impact on account of integration of, uh, you know, consolidation of micro board, which is about 0.6 percent. And the rest change is due to the change in the product mix. You know, there are certain products uh, that we manufacture. We have a very vast portfolio, certain products which are high on uh, material consumption, but low on direct expenses and vice versa for some categories. So because of change in this product mix, we saw uh, an improvement in uh, the gross margins. Uh, at the same time, there was a slight uh, increase in uh, cost of manpower and power and fuel and such other expenses, uh, which uh, you know offset the gains uh, in the uh, operating margins. So as a result of this, we achieved this EBITDA number of 17 uh, odd percent. Going forward from a sustainable number, we continue to uh, you know have a, a targeted EBITDA range for this year and between 16 to 17 percent. And going forward for the next year, between that sustainable number would be about 15 to 17 percentage. But uh, this year, like when you already had 17.4, yeah, and uh, 4Q at least like looks like last year was strong. In that case, why are you guiding to a lower number, uh, 16, 17? Uh, certain uh, uh, certain uh, raw material prices, you know, which were lower in the previous quarter have you know, again, uh, started to increase, you know, the last quarter certain polypropylene prices were, you know, probably very low. This year, uh, starting this year, we started seeing a reversal in that. Understood. Thanks. Second one is on CAPEX. So, uh, like, what number will you end up with in FY24? And, like, if you can talk about plans for FY25, 26, and what will be the focus area of investments? So in the first nine months of the year, our uh, capex has been about 117 crore rupees. Uh, you know, uh, in the last quarter itself, we did about uh, 28 uh, uh, crores of capex. Uh, in the current quarter, uh, you know, we uh, project that the capex would be upwards of 30 crores. Uh, we've started uh, utilizing in this quarter some proceeds from the uh, IPO for the proposed project. Uh, so given that, we will do uh, end up this year close to about 150 crores of capex. Uh, going forward in F, uh, FY25, FY26, our capex would be between 200 to 225 crores in each of the two years. Okay. okay. Uh, lastly, uh, if you can talk about uh, while all the divisions seem to have done well, paper stationery seems a little weak. Is it because of decline in paper prices or? If you can talk about like why that segment seems to be weak. So, Kunal Bhai, uh, in uh, paper stationery, if you see uh, in the previous years, uh, the contribution of export sales to the overall uh, paper business was higher. 
uh, in the current year due to you know some uh, challenges in key markets like europe uh, etc uh, exports have been a little lower and that has impacted the paper business but that has partially been offset by the increase in demand in the domestic market understood understood okay i have more questions but i'll come back in the queue thank you thank you before we take the next question we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask a question the next question is in the line of ankit kedia from philip capital please go ahead i uh, just wanted to understand what is the volume and value growth you know for first uh, nine months and the quarter and along with that specifically in the pencils business if you can highlight what has been the uh, you know volume and value growth so uh, angel bhai uh, you know uh, at a company level it is really very difficult for us to uh, talk about uh, you know volume growth because we manufacture a lot of different products and each are sold in you know different sizes units packs uh but if we talk specifically about you know good and pencils you know which is a key uh, product segment for us uh compared to the quarter ended in uh, december 22 to uh, quarter ended december 23 the increase in uh, volume was about 16% uh in terms of volume uh then there are certain products other key products like watercolor pens mathematical boxes where we increase capacity there volume increased by about uh, 61% and uh, about uh, 72% so there have been significant volume growths uh, where the company is added uh, capacities and on terms of value growth across uh, most of our product segments we've seen uh, you know uh, asp is increasing in the range of 3 to 5% and uh, specifically for wooden pencils what has been the asp increase for the quarter so and nine months pencil if we talk about our uh, you know again we have two components there one is wooden pe- uh, wooden black lead pencils and wooden color lead pencils black lead is the significant portion where the asp increase has been about 3.5% so is it safe to assume that the wooden pencils is growing slower than the company average no not really like i said you know uh, not really if you look at the overall company level uh, you know our growth uh, in scholastic stationery has been uh, close to similar what has been our overall growth a uh, plus uh, also you uh, you know there's an interesting thing uh, for example a lot of uh, you'll see a significant growth in uh, kits and combination packs again these packs uh, pencil is a large constituent there so those increase in capacities get uh, diverted towards sales of such uh, packs also sure and so could you just throw some light on you know the channel wise growth what you have seen in the quarter uh, how has been the distribution expansion and you know for nine months and for the quarter and where are you seeing a, a higher growth so uh, you know uh, like we always maintained you know our uh, priority market has been the domestic market and in domestic market also we've always focused on the general trade segment so uh, general trade uh, you know segment uh, continues to uh, uh, have the f- uh, focus for us uh, this segment constitutes more than 75% of our total sales uh otherwise from a channel perspective channel mix it has been pretty much in line uh so last year fy23 uh general trade was 74% and for the 9 months you are saying it's grown to 75% plus 75% yes uh so the decline is coming in um which uh channel so if you see oh, as numbers and the presentation we had highlighted that exports has been uh, you know which was earlier about 21% export has now uh, slowed down due to certain you know uh, markets where you know demand has been lower like europe and plus certain disruptions due to this uh, logistical challenges from red sea uh, disruption so because of which exports have been smaller and now constitute about 18% of our sales so that has been you know uh, absorbed by the domestic market and uh, primarily in the general trade so sure. that's helpful i'll come back in the queue for more questions thank you thank you 
The next question is on the line of Amit J. Swani from Stallion Asset. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Ravesha Ji. First time we are speaking. Uh, good evening. My first question, sir, is that how large is the opportunity in front of us? And where do you see DOMS being in the next three to five years? First of all, congratulations on being a billion dollar company by market cap. Uh, but what kind of profit pools uh, do you aspire to generate for the next uh, three to five years? Like this is, that would you be continuing to growing at, uh, so last decade we've grown at about 25, 27%. Uh, would it be right to say that that kind of growth rate is sustainable for the next three to five years? So, uh, I was, uh, Ravel here. So just to take your question on the growth and the guidance, you know, for, uh, you know, this year, uh, FY24, we'll uh, end uh, with a growth rate of between 25 to 26%. And this is a similar sort of a growth we will target to achieve in the uh, coming financial year as well. Uh, in terms of opportunity, you know, uh, we really believe that uh, the opportunity in the Indian stationery and art material segment is significant. Uh, you know, not only is the market increasing because of certain uh, factors like focus on, uh, you know, government initiatives on education and all, but also there's a lot of new demand coming in, you know, uh, with respect to, you know, whenever we've launched certain types of new products which act were not existent in the market. But the acceptance level of these products has also been very great. So we believe we'll be able to expand the market as well. So with new product developments, with uh, our focus on R&D, product engineering, and getting the best product available at the best value, we think that the market potential is significant. And uh, with our expertise and experience, we'll be at the forefront to leverage this uh, benefit in the coming years. And would you say that you would be reinvesting 100% of your operating cash flows in the more capacity every year? Uh, you know, it's very difficult to answer this at this point of time, but yes, we continue to see a uh, uh, good opportunity uh, in the existing product segments. There are a lot of new product lines that we would enter. Uh, in addition to uh, organic growth, we are always on a lookout for attractive inorganic opportunities. So how things shape up, uh, that will really constitute that uh, whether we'll be doing a 100% reinvestment. But yes, we do believe that the potential is huge and we would want to be at the forefront with, uh, you know, getting maximum market share as much as possible. So on our highest category, which is pencils, we are about 11% of the entire market, right? No. No, no, entire market of, uh, sorry, Pencils, what, what would be a market share, sorry? Market share mm -hmm. would be about 11 to 12% of the entire stationary market. Pencil is within that segment, if you talk about, then we are at about 29%. Got it, got it. And the industry, stationary industry is growing at about 8%. Would that, would, would that be the right benchmark? And we would be able to grow at three times faster than the industry? So industry, overall industry is growing at about 11 to 12 percent. Then there are certain categories within the industry which are demonstrating a little higher growth as well. For example, uh, uh, pencils, writing <coughs> instruments, which are close to about 16 percent growth. Got it. Got it. So our, uh, uh, got it. And uh, our gross margins will stay at these levels uh, broadly for going forward in the newer categories that we enter. So uh, uh, if you look at, you know, uh, gross margins across uh, different products are different and therefore we, you know, as a company always look at EBITDA as the right, uh, you know, uh, uh, value in to justify whether these products are doing well or no. So on an EBITDA perspective, EBITDA level, any new product that we intend to introduce we work with that targeted EBITDA margin of 15% and only then, uh, you know, proceed uh, in terms of uh, introducing that product in market. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one.
The next question is on the line of Mehul Desai from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, team, for taking my question and congratulations for the great set of numbers. Uh, so my first question is on uh, on the distribution side. If you can give some flavor as to uh, how has distribution increased uh, versus what you ended on uh, FI23 and uh, how do you look at it going forward over next two, 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 three years uh, in terms of your outlet reach? That's the first question. Uh, second question is on the regional mix. If you can give some flavor, um, how much of your revenues are coming from North and West market and how much is coming from South and East and uh, what is the strategy to drive growth more in South? My understanding is that we are under leveraged or under indexed in uh, South versus our North and West market. Uh, so if you could address these two questions. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Vesha. So, Mayul, uh, to answer your first question, in terms of retail footprint, uh, you know, uh, in Q2, we had about uh, 1,20,000 retail outlets which were touching directly, uh, which were serviced through our uh, sales team. Uh, in the third quarter, this number increased by about 2,500 retail touch points. Uh, in terms of distributor uh, distribution reach, the increase was close to about uh, 200 distributors during the quarter. Uh, in terms of uh, regional mix, you know, uh, if you see uh, historically also, we were present in accord as you know, sales from each region justified the population of that uh, region, and even uh, currently it is uh, similarly. Uh, justifying the presence where the population is highest north, it constitutes to uh, the highest sales followed by west and then south and east. So it's a very balanced mix in proportion to the uh, population of that particular uh, region. Sure. And uh, any guidance on uh, where this uh, distribution can go over next two to three years uh, in terms of the outlet risk which you mentioned? So uh, it will be a gradual increase. You know, our uh, our uh, strategy from uh, earlier time has been that wherever we reach, you know, the new retail outlet we open, we maximize the throughput from that particular retail outlet, and therefore, uh, you know, wherever we are entering a shop, we would want to justify the requirements of that particular retail outlet, and only then expand. So it will be a gradual increase over a period of time. And you know we would not want to get into that numbers of increasing it at a very fast pace, but do justification to each store where we are present. Okay. And any flavor that you would like to give on what kind of uh, newer categories that you are looking? I think you. I mean we have uh, taken a small stake in a toy uh, company too. So if you could mention what's the outlook in some of the in these categories, what are the plans or uh, what are the new categories that we like where we think that we can expand maybe in next two to three years apart from the current stationary products that we have. So uh, like you were. Uh... Like you were aware, in this uh, current financial year, we entered the conventional pen segment. Uh, that, as a product segment, is something which is seeing a, a very good and positive response from the market. Uh, you know, after the launch of this product, uh, since about <coughs> seven eight months, we have been able to you know meet the requirements only of, of few states in India. We've not been able to sell this at a pan india level as well so this product segment is seeing a lot of uh, demand and uh, you know interest from our consumers similarly uh, scholastic adhesives uh, you know we are in the process of launching a very wide range of scholastic adhesives and also expanding our uh, product portfolio in the fine art range so uh, these are the key product segments or categories where there would be uh, you know uh, continued focus uh, nevertheless in our existing product segments categories also we continue to keep coming out with new skus which are more relevant with what the you know our consumers are uh, experiencing and those product launches keep happening on a regular basis sure great thank you thank you that's all from my thanks very much Thank you. The next question is on the line of Chinmay Nima from Present Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, just trying to understand the historical performance of the company. So uh, if I look at the last two, three years, 
the top line has almost doubled from FY22 to FY23. Uh, so, could you help uh, us understand what was the re- what happened during that period? Uh, what was the reason for that? Secondly, the working capital has also really improved in the last two three years. So, uh, what happened there, and what should be the normalized level uh, that we should look at? Sure, Jinmay. So, Jinmay, uh, firstly, just to uh, you know, FY twenty one, FY twenty two, these were two years which were actually impacted because of COVID. Uh, as you would be aware, you know, uh, most of these periods, educational institutes uh, remain shut, uh, and hence the demand for uh, stationary products uh, decreased significantly. Uh, so, our, you know, it's more of a base year uh, sort of a uh, effect uh, rather than you know growing 100%. It's the base figure was wrong. In FY23, uh, with the educational institutions opening up. we continue to see good demand for the product our products plus during the covid years the company had uh, you know continued to do capital expenditure to enhance our capacities so in fy23 due to increased in capacity a little bit of effect of the uh, you know pent up demand we were able to increase our sales by almost 100 uh, you know like i said now this is more of a normalized uh, period that's why we believe from a guidance perspective we will be doing about uh, 25% growth uh, in our sales and uh, the spec sir uh, so that would be the same. and sorry chairman i missed your uh, second question if you could just uh, working capital yeah yeah so uh, in terms of working capital uh, you know the change that you see has been primarily on account of uh one uh, you know our earlier our entire uh, domestic uh, general trade segment where we used to extend a little bit of credit was moved to a cash and carry advance sort of a model because of which our debtors days went down significantly uh, also in terms of inventories uh, with the you know companies operations being more uh, you know increasing uh, there was a better uh, inventory utilization that we could do uh, as a result of these factors predominantly working capital reduced uh, our current working capital is also close to that about 37 to 38 days and going forward uh, you know our range would be about 40 to 45 days considering that there are certain products where you know we by choice keep a higher working capital uh, higher inventory levels and that too only in raw materials uh, you know because there are dependency on uh, certain uh, natural resources so when the uh, you know the sales of these product increase uh, because of capacity addition then the working capital days go up in terms of debtor days we are still at that average of 12 to 13 days only got it sir uh, that's uh, really helpful uh just lastly if you could comment on uh, i mean as a company how do we differentiate ourselves from our peers uh, i mean just trying to understand whether the future growth is supposed to come from uh, taking the market share from other companies or you know is there enough market for everyone everyone to grow so you know firstly you know uh, we never try to compare ourselves or place ourselves with our peers you know we believe in uh, you know being ourselves you know whenever we would want to launch a product or launch a category we always believe that we look at what our consumer are who are consumer and we understand our consumer much better than anybody else could do so therefore we know basically what is the requirements of our consumers and based on that we design products develop products and this everything happens in house you know uh, right from designing to development and to uh, you know conceptualizing manufacturing uh, we have a completely backward integrated operations so as a result of this you know we become very efficient and this is seen in the pricing of our products also so we are able to give a far more superior product at a very good value to our consumer which uh, you know brings us brings them back to doms so that is uh, one of our key success factors which is a mix of like i said our uh, manufacturing capabilities our design capabilities our understanding of our consumers and this is what we want to continue doing for across all the products that we are into and we intend to enter into
uh, got it, sir. That's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Janesh Joshi from Prabhudas Leela, the Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity, uh, sir. I want to understand our CAPEX plan a bit better because if I look at our RHP, uh, we had mentioned that we'll spend about uh, 450 crores. And uh, the plant will be operational by December 25. But if I look at our PPT, uh, we have also mentioned that uh, we have commenced a production at about 1 lakh square feet, uh, which is within our existing infra. And additional 1 lakh square feet will become operational uh, very soon. So what is the CAPEX uh, uh, that is earmarked for this uh, 2 lakh uh, uh, worth of area, which is uh, due for expansion? and uh, which all cate categories will we be uh, spending this amount into? So, uh, just to uh, clarify, you know, uh, the RHP, what uh, the plan was given was for the proposed facility and expansion in the newly acquired 44 acres of land. Out of the total amount which was given of about 450 plus crores, the company had already acquired the land for almost 75 crores, so balance was about 380 crores of uh, uh, investment, of which 280 crores was raised in the IPO. Uh, this uh, project is, uh, you know, uh, we just recently received the final approval uh, which was required before commencement of construction. This was in uh, terms of getting the town planning approval. So we are now soon expected to start uh, construction on this uh, newly acquired land and the capex towards that building and construction is something which we will start seeing from the coming quarters in terms of what we built in house in our existing infrastructure we had uh, already acquired the land and on these lands there was uh, you know possibility of increasing uh, you know have constructing two more buildings which we did one a building of 100000 square feet became operational uh, and we started getting revenues from this uh, from the month of uh, October. Uh, and, uh, you know, this building is purely for uh, our writing instrument segment where, uh, you know, uh, we've started with uh, commercial production of the conventional uh, ballpoint pens and also uh, increased slightly our capacity in uh, markers and in uh, brush pens. Uh, there is a building adjacent which is currently under construction. Construction is almost over. Uh, we will soon start setting up uh, the plant and machinery at this uh, building and expect to get commercial production from quarter one 2025. If you see, even with the first building, we were able to set up commercial production in a record time of 90 days from the time we got the possession of the building when construction was complete. Here also uh, we expect the same sort of a time frame and again this building uh, considering the demand for the pens that we've launched is uh, much much higher than what we uh, you know anticipated earlier. So this building also we would want to uh, you know focus in terms of uh, writing instrument to enhance our capacities in pens and uh, the ballpoint pen segment. How much are we spending incrementally for uh this two adjacent buildings which you just mentioned so in terms of uh, construction so like i said uh, so in terms of going forward uh, so sir uh, this uh, uh, i mean uh, here in the nine months like i mentioned you know we spend about 170 no no sir i i get that i get that my question was for this additional two lakh square feet which you have just mentioned how much are we spending specifically for that in terms of construction cost? Yes. Uh, so uh, one building is already ready and the construction completed. And for the second building, uh, you know, we'll be spending a total, uh, you know, additional expense would be of about 17, 17 odd crore rupees. Contact, contact. Uh, and sir, uh, last question is uh, with respect to our uh, working capital. You mentioned in your uh, uh, answer to previous participants' question that uh, uh, we have moved to uh, cash and carry, and hence our uh, uh, receivable days have uh, come off uh, quite a bit. 
so just wanted to understand in terms of uh, uh, positioning uh, if uh, we are uh, uh, on this cash and carry model so to say so do we offer a higher dealer distribution margin uh, as compared to peers or what is the point on which uh, we are competing to get a get a higher high, higher revenue share because i think credit period and margins are the two things which essentially anyone would compete on okay, so uh, honestly right now we are seeing a very significant pull from the market you know uh, across our uh, you know across uh, domestically or also in exports there is a very strong pull for the doms brand uh, because of which and what is happening with the retailers also is the doms products which they get they are witnessing a fast turnaround and as a result of this the demand itself is very high so in terms of margins you know our margins from the ch uh, channel would be in line with what the entire industry offers uh, the pure reason that we've been able to shift the entire trade to a cash and carry sort of a model has been because of the strong demand and pull for the brand and our products. Got that. And so what is the industry-wide uh, distribution margin or for that matter your distribution margin, the entire channel if you can call it out? So our uh, margin, you know, uh, uh, in terms of uh, there are certain products, different products have different margins at the retail level, but at the stockage level, our margins are about five and a half percent, and at the distributor level, it is nine percent, uh, and then for the retail level, it's different across different products. Got that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rahul Bhai, Aniruddh here. Uh, some questions from my side as well. Uh, in terms of branding initiatives, so uh, while the growth has been very, very strong and um, uh, as of now we are not investing in ad spend, but now new capacities are coming on stream. So will there be any change in the plan uh, in terms of the branding initiatives? So, uh, honestly, uh, in, in, uh, you know, as you know, historically also and now also our uh, marketing and advertising spends continue to be in the range of 0.4 to 0.5%. Till now, we've not seen the requirement uh, for, you know, investing more in this uh, uh, with the new capacities of pens also. Like I said, you know, today we are being able to sell only to uh, f four or five states of the country. Uh, with the capacity, so uh, the demand is already there. But if required in future, if we see, then there is the capability is there to increase this spend. But as of now, we uh, don't see such a requirement. And whenever needed, like I said, our financial profile allows us to, uh, you know, invest in this segment. Yeah, sure, sure, understood. Secondly, in terms of the pen rollout, the 5 rupee pen, I guess uh, it was initially in Gujarat market and now how do you see the progress in terms of the rollout on a pan India basis and any growth targets uh, that you have in the mind that you can share on the pen business? So Aniruji, right now, you know, uh, initial rollout was definitely from uh, Gujarat and then MP and till now we started selling in about five states of India, uh, you know, today we have a cup. Today, uh, you know, one building is already uh, uh, ready and doing commercial production of pens uh, since uh, October. Uh, another building will soon be ready there once those capacities come in. That is when, uh, you know, we'll expand to other states. But here also, like when we spoke, uh, spoke about our retail footprint, here also the idea is same wherever. Uh, we enter whatever state we enter, we want to take a position of significance of leadership, uh, justify that uh, uh, position and only then move to uh, new uh, territories. So that's the same strategy we'll follow. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, the uh, initial response has been significant. Uh, we, we are happy with it and we believe this to be a key uh, segment for the company soon. Sure, uh, understood. Uh, in terms of the uh, revenue salience of the premium products, for example, in case of premium pencils, the pricing of let's say eight rupees and above, uh, we can let's say if we consider as premium and luxury. So, uh, 
if you can indicate the company's uh, revenue share from the premium products and how it has uh, moved over a period of time also uh, in case of these uh, relatively premium products what will be the company's market share uh, versus the other brands into the market so anil honestly at the top level we not want to uh, track it at such a micro sort of a level Uh, see uh, today in terms of when we talk about pencils the 6 rupee mrp pencil continues to be the largest selling uh, you know uh, product segment for us uh, new capacities also coming in it's well distributed across the segments uh, but specifically you know how much market share or how much sales uh, coming from that specific segment that's something which we don't uh, Uh, you know wouldn't want to track and differentiate into okay so sure, sir just two more questions from my side one uh, in terms of uh, the toys uh, business so any update on that uh, progress how many uh, p- new products that uh, have been uh, in a way rolled out or uh, are in the pipeline and in terms of distribution where are we as far as the toys uh, distribution is concerned i agree it's a very recent acquisition and uh, still a lot of work needs to be done uh, but if you can share any pipeline let's say for fi 25 or so so and it will be like uh, uh, you know uh, like we initially discussed uh, you know toys uh, the acquisition that we did was to understand this uh, market understand the product and to uh, see how these products can complement with our existing distribution network so towards this uh, you know we uh, a lot of product redesigning uh, is happening a lot of uh, products are being packed in such a way that they become attractive for uh, uh, you know retailers to have in their stationery shops uh, we've all uh, already started uh, selling uh, clapjoy products in our existing distributed network especially in the north market uh, the initial feedback has been uh, uh, positive and that is how uh, you know uh, we are uh, uh, thinking of expanding this segment uh, rolling it out on a pan india basis uh, so going forward though very small now but we are optimistic that in a few years time this segment would be attractive Uh, and decent in terms of size and you know once it becomes uh, 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 larger i think we will start uh, discussing more in terms of numbers with respect to this particular segment sure sure sir understood and uh, very last question from my side uh, now the market shares of the key products of the company are not very easily available in public domain so if you can indicate uh, uh, the likely market share gains uh, in this quarter or let's say in 9 months uh, what we, it will be any further color on that means in terms of which are the products would have gained market share or which are the regions where you would have uh, gained the market share even if you don't share the numbers it's fine just the qualitative uh, feedback is also uh, very appreciable yeah that's it from my side thanks honestly aniruji uh, you know like you said it's very difficult to track the size of this market you know therefore uh, you know we would also not have a, a lot of information in terms of the size of the market and uh, which uh, uh, segments have grown uh, in terms of doms what growth we've achieved and in which particular segment that we've already uh, disclosed in our uh, presentation so i think nothing additional to add in terms of market size unfortunately because it's not something which is readily available understood and any guidance that uh, you would like to roll out for fi 25 uh, in terms of revenues or margins uh, as such so as mentioned earlier in terms of revenue uh, for fi 25 we would uh, you know want to guide close to that 20 to 25% uh, sort of a range with an ebitda margin between 15 to 17%. So we uh, <coughs> always believe uh, good to be a little conservative and deliver something better which will create a wow factor for everyone. So uh, we'd uh, want to follow that as well.
Ah, that's that's really a, actually a great guidance. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks from my side. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Kunal Vora from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I was looking at like segments. It looks like art material and office stationery seem to have done well with like uh, upwards of 35-40% growth. So what's happening here and uh, is pen contributing to the office stationery fit? Uh, yes, Kunal So uh, pens is a part of the office supply segment. So, uh, you know, like uh, mentioned, we added capacities in pens, therefore, uh, you will see, uh, you know, growth in that segment. In terms of art material also, there has been uh, capacity additions uh, in our uh, crayon segment, in our watercolor pen segment. Uh, so, these capacity additions uh, coupled with a slight increase in the ASPs has led to that growth. Okay, so wherever you are adding capacity, you are immediately seeing growth uh, so far. How big is pen uh, right now? I mean, like say, if you look at three Q F Y twenty four, what will be the contribution, and how big do you see it happening in F Y twenty five? Considering that you have visibility on capex, and if you are able to sell what you are producing, in that case, how big can pen become in F Y twenty five versus F Y twenty four? So uh, in, I can talk about the current quarter. Like I said, you know, there's something, pen is something new. So we'll want to take it step by step as and when we launch it. Uh, but uh, in the uh, uh, current quarter, if I have to say, uh, we did about uh, 16 and a half crores of uh, revenues from uh, the pen segment. Okay, okay, okay. And how large a capacity are you like deploying on the pen side? Um, are you looking to double, triple? What kind of capacity increase are you planning for pen? So in the current uh, building that we've already uh, started, our capacity is 1 million. Uh, the new building that we will now, you know, come into commercial production in the uh, next uh, uh, quarter, uh, in first quarter of FY25, that would be an additional 1 million. Uh, and then would be the new capacity that would come from the 44 acre plant, which would be about 4 million. So double of what we will have in the existing infrastructure. So eventually we'll target to have capacity in uh, pens of about total of about 6 million. Okay. Okay. So right now it's a million and you're doing about 17 crore of sales and uh, it will be 6 million. So like assuming that like say it's a linear increase in that so, case you're looking no, at a much larger uh, number even what would happen kunal bhai is not the entire capacity was started from day one it was uh enhancement over a period of time uh so i think uh, once we have a couple of quarters go by in terms of you know full-fledged production then we'll be able to guide on this number a little better understood understood okay and you mentioned that micro would contributed to my, uh, the improvement in margin in uh, nine months. What was the revenue contribution, or like, say, if I want to look at just the organic revenue growth, how would that be compared to what you reported? So uh, basically, if uh, micro would uh, our subsidy basically is into manufacturing of tin box and paper packaging and uh, mm -hmm. boards. So mm -hmm. basically, <coughs> most of these products are sold to DOMS and our other subsidiary pioneer so about 98 percent of the sales of micro would come goes to doms and pioneer only so there's no no material increase in sales because of the acquisition of micro wood, but it is purely because of uh, you know the elimination of margins on consolidation that you see the benefit at the operating level understood understood so there is a margin impact but not really a not a revenue impact, it's a margin impact. Understood, understood. And lastly, if I look at most mass consumption categories, we've seen a slowdown in the last few quarters. Uh, are you seeing any slowdown at all? I mean, I understand that, like, say, through market share gains, you might be going fast. But uh, otherwise, uh, what's your view on uh, what's happening in rural markets as well as mass consumption categories? It's absolutely in line with what it was earlier, you know. Uh, what we were doing earlier, we continue to do so. Uh, we see the demand be healthy and strong for our products across markets, you know, rural, uh, urban, uh, A-plus cities, everything is pretty much uh, similar. Uh, 
uh, it's healthy. We uh, have not seen any sort of uh, slowdown as to say. Understood. And lastly, if you can make some comments on international as well as exports potential in FY25, how are you looking at it, especially with the additional capacity which is coming in? Would you prioritize the local market or do you have some big plans for international markets in the near term? So, uh, you know, since the time we launched Dom's brand, uh, our focus has been uh, domestic uh, and that we'll continue to do so. Uh, we believe that the opportunity in the domestic market itself is uh, significant uh, and uh, with the right sort of product and offering, we will be able to capitalize on this uh, significantly. So that focus will continue to remain in the domestic market. Export also has a lot of promise, but we'll be very uh, conscious in terms of how much we want to do. It will not be at the cost of the domestic market. But now that you have the capital, why not accelerate uh, the investment and capture the international markets also at the earliest? Or do you think that... Uh, like I said, during the introduction part also, you know, today uh, at the speed at which we are commercializing uh, operations like you know we commercialize our pen plant within 90 days from the 90 days from the day we got possession of this plant after the construction being over which would be probably the fastest in the industry so uh, definitely you know like uh, y'all we are also very excited about the potential and would want to do this at as soon as possible but then there are certain things which take their time you know you could not uh, uh, accelerated uh, uh, significantly but and we don't want to make any mistake uh, in this entire journey understood understood and what's the net cash uh, as of nine months fy 24 uh, our uh, net cash as on nine months you know which has an impact of uh, uh, the ipo proceeds so mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, uh, there is about net cash of about uh, 430 crores with a, a debt of a net debt of about 156 crores. So if you net it off, that's the cash position. Understood, understood. understood. But that's so not cash a of 430 and net of 156. Okay, so net number. From the IPO which came in. Understood. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Aniruji, ISEC team, and thank you, Lisa. Uh, I would like to once again thank all of you for joining us on this call today. Uh, we hope we have been able to answer your queries. Uh, please feel free to reach out to our IR team for any additional clarifications or feedback that you all may have. Thank you once again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.